Barbara McQuaid, author of Attack from Within, How Disinformation is Sabotaging America, professor of law at the University of Michigan is with us. Thank you very much. It's good to see you. Congrats on the book. I'm fascinated just by the title. Who decides in in your world, in your mind, in, in what you hope to, to help, what disinformation is? Well, I think all of us have a responsibility to look to evidence, data, statistics before we reach conclusions about what is factual and what is not. You know, my background is as a, a criminal prosecutor. I prosecuted crimes. And before a fact could be deemed true, there had to be attribution for that fact. Just like in journalism, you don't just say things, mm -hmm. you attribute it to a source. And in the same way, in court, we use evidence, uh, testimony, documents, records, so, so data. Does this mean we so have like a disinformation court? Uh, no. No, I no? think maybe we should stop this interview. You sound like you're um, looking for an attack. I think we're good. I, I guess I no, misunderstood. I, I'm just, I think about. I'm just trying to ask about your book, ma'am. Uh, a disinformation I'm just trying to figure out, trying, no, no, the, not, the title of your book, not, the title of your book is Disinformation is Sabotaging America. Who decides what is and is not disinformation? We do based on facts and evidence. Okay. And it is, I'm not proposing a disinformation court, but you know, there is this idea that people want to suggest there's no such thing as facts. There's no such thing as truth. Mm -hmm. Because if there are no facts and no truth, I can call everything that's inconvenient fake news and I can get away with anything. And I think if we are to have a country based on integrity and facts and reach conclusions, we have to base those things on facts. Now, who is the arbiter of facts? I guess ultimately that is uh, the court of public opinion, but we should reach those conclusions based on evidence uh, and data and not just because someone said something uh, and okay, they heard, I've... To, 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 to deem it to be false. Okay, so, and I, I think, you know, in the law, you often take things to the extreme. I'm not, I'm not a lawyer, but I think about when, for example, Hunter Biden's laptop was called disinformation. It's later, it's later now been found out to be true. So was that sabotaging America? How do we deal with things that are, that appear to be a disinformation or people would tell you is, different, is disinformation that is not? Yeah, so we really need to discern facts and from fiction and legal conclusions. With regard to the Hunter Biden laptop, for example, I think it has been determined that much of the email and content that was on that lap laptop was genuine. Uh, but to this day, there has not been a conclusion that it was his laptop. And so if you go to some of the websites that do work to uh, debunk false claims. There's one called politifact.com. There's sure. one called factfact.org. There's another called Snopes. You know, nonpartisan efforts to present what is actually factually- Really, they're nonpartisan, you think? So, I'm sorry? You really think they're nonpartisan? I think they endeavor to do their best to present okay. facts. And what, and what they do, Leland, let me explain what they do. They attribute the facts that have been demonstrated. Rather than wild conclusions, they say, here's what we know and how we know it, and here's what we don't know. And so, you know, people will take one grain of, of, of truth and then spin it into something larger than it is. And I think it's incumbent on all of us to try to look at what are the actual facts so that we no, can draw I, 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 together to solve problems instead I agree of with it. I, like gotcha but you make a, as you're doing you right make a, now. I don't think I'm probably trying to play gotcha. I'm just trying to ask a couple of questions here. And I think your book is important because it's something that people are talking about, about, an, about ways to change laws. I know you've suggested possibly uh, changing the First Amendment in one way or another to protect people oh. um, from... Def well, that's what you said last night. Um, have you read the book? No, I haven't. I'm just going okay. off what you so said that, last that night. Explains, that explains your uh, lack of knowledge of what I say in the book. I absolutely don't say anything about uh, changing the First Amendment. What I say is we can enact a number of legal regulations with social media that comply with the First Amendment. For example, there are algorithms on social media that generate outrage and push us toward content that encourage us to be outraged in an effort to keep us on those platforms. We know that because a Facebook whistleblower named Francis Haugen testified about that. Oh, you know, I was going off when you said yesterday that you were calling free speech an Achilles heel. 
was, I think, the term you used, right? Yeah, so what I said is uh, free speech is some, a cherished value in our country. You cherish it. I cherish it. It is what makes us a free democracy and the ability for us to speak out against our government. It's what gives us free protest, and it's an incredible value. But there are people out there who are exploiting our very freedoms against it because they know we cherish this right of free speech. They bombard us with sure. false claims. Knowing fair, that fair, we are fair, fair enough. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.